in a sea of smartwatches that all cost from $200 to $650 and usually last anywhere from 24 to 36 hours off charger, nothing came along and released the new CMF branded Watch Pro 2, a minimally stylish smartwatch that costs, get this, $69. But you know what they say, what's the catch? Well, I'm happy you asked. Hi, I'm Jason Howell, and boy, do I have some opinions to share on the CMF Watch Pro 2. So I'm not going to waste any more time. I'm going to get right to it. But I will say, if you like what you're watching here, subscribe, comment down below. I promise to respond. All right. Yes, this is the CMF Watch Pro 2, and it is an inexpensive smartwatch at 69 bucks. And yes, it does most of the smartwatchy things that you might hope for. And... As much as I hate to say it, no, it doesn't do them all particularly well. But why don't we go ahead and start with something it gets pretty right, right off the top, the design. The CMF Watch Pro 2 has a sleek and minimal design aesthetic to it with a 42 millimeter watch face here, pretty small, should work on smaller wrists, thankfully. And it's super lightweight, it's 44 grams. You could compare that against the Apple Watch 9, which is 52 grams by comparison. It has this aluminum design, very stark, kind of has some rigid, sharp edges around, you know, some of those sharp lines uh, that can be a little pokey at times. And it has this replaceable bezel right here. You can't tell right now, but if I rotate it, I can take that off and this bezel is replaceable. Now, why might you wanna do that? Well, nothing sells different styles of bezels to go on the CMF Watch Pro 2. And that is all in an effort to stylize this watch and make it look just a little bit different for what you can find out there. But as you can see, it's <laughs> not the easiest bezel to get on. Sometimes it takes me quite a while. It actually took me about 10 minutes to get it to fit the other day, which I guess is good in the sense that it's not gonna fall off very easily, but when you need to swap them, it's not as easy as just drop right in and go. Am I gonna be able to get it back on? <laughs> <laughs> In theory, the bezel is a really neat idea. Oh God, this is embarrassing. <gasps> oh, did I get it? Uh, no. <laughs> I can't do the rest of this review unless I can get this bezel back on. <laughs> I should never have taken it off. It's kind of like a puzzle. <laughs> Obviously you don't want to do that because you might never get it back on. <gasps> there we go. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> ah, I really feel like I've accomplished something today. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on from the rotating bezel is the crown, another thing that rotates on the watch. And actually, thankfully, the crown actually has a function. Maybe not in the initial screen here, but if I tap it, I can actually use the crown to maneuver through the menu system of all the different features. You've got your notifications, which you can you know, swipe through as well. And of course you can push the crown to go back when you're in certain areas and you need to back out to the home screen. IP68 rated, so splashes, yes. Submersion, no. There is a haptic motor in here. And I'd say it's a reasonable haptic system. It's not crazy strong, but it's not super light either. The watch strap is a standard 22 millimeter attachment. So you can go up here and flick that and remove it and replace it. Um, and you're probably gonna want to because I do not care for this watch strap at all. There's something about it that just gives me kind of like old school, like calculator watch vibes from when I was younger. I could just see this splitting um, after not too much time, the way it's worn in such a short amount of time. So definitely gonna wanna replace that watch strap. Now flipped over, you can see the little sensor pod area that rests on your wrists. You actually get heart rate monitoring, blood oxygen monitoring, stress, and sleep monitoring uh, out of this wearable, which isn't too bad for a $69 smartwatch. Now flipping it over, we do have here a pretty awesome display actually. I'd say this is one of the uh, standout features here. A 1.32 inch AMOLED. Yes, an AMOLED, which is a huge advantage at this price point. Very excellent choice at $69. 466 by 466 resolution. Things look, I'd say pretty, pretty sharp actually in daily use, but only 620 nits peak 
brightness, which makes this look nice indoors, not so amazing if you're outdoors in bright sunny days. Also, do keep in mind that the glass itself is, you know, nothing special as far as protecting from scratches. No sapphire crystal, no gorilla glass that I was able to uh, find in the specs. So, you know, for something that you're wearing on your wrist as you go out and about in the world, I, I know I'm a little bit of a clumsy person. My <laughs> my hands flail about. Hey, I'm a tall guy. I got long limbs. And every once in a while, they make a connection with a wall or a random you know staircase or something like that. Those are the kinds of things that you're going to see potentially some markings on the glass here because the glass isn't anything really special. Uh, and that also goes for the aluminum body, which is not going to be nearly as durable as something like stainless steel. But hey, sixty nine dollars, right? And another standout feature here is the battery. Now, it's not a huge battery inside. It's a 305 milliamp hour battery, but the CMF Watch Pro 2 does get around 10 to 12 days of use off the charger in standard mode. Now, this isn't just the rated battery life that you know, nothing gave me. This was my experience. It's pretty awesome. Throw it into power saving mode. And basically what you get is a watch. You get a watch with a digital readout of the time, the date, and the amount of battery remaining. There is nothing you can do <laughs> with this when it's in that power saving mode. So I guess if it's of the utmost importance that you have access to the time, wherever you happen to be, you can throw it in that mode and you get, you know, some distance out of that. Now, as for charging the watch charges via those two pogo pins underneath you do get a little kind of minimal charger included in the box it just snaps right to it if you've got it lined up that was the wrong way to do it with the magnets just snaps right to it i mean it's very minimal i see this as a good cost savings measure if they had to cut corners and cut spending on on pieces of the watch to bring that price down this is one way to do it but it's it's pretty minimal you, you know you just kind of have to find a place to to flop the watch while it's charging now the battery life is an impressive stat no doubt but i believe there is at least to some degree an obvious reason for that battery life, and that is the software. So first and foremost, this is not Wear OS. Repeat, this is not Wear OS, and you might know that right out of the box, and that's not in and of itself you know, a bad thing necessarily. But I found as a regular Wear OS user that it's really hard for me to undo the expectations that I have for a wearable because of that experience. And when you come to a watch that does so much less or does, you know, some of the same things, but very, very differently, it's definitely an adjustment. This is proprietary software that is, yes, based on Android, but it is every part nothing's design, right? There is nothing familiar uh, with the layout of, of their design when compared to something like Wear OS. So with that comes the fact that you will not get things that you might be used to with Wear OS. And that's just the cost of doing business at $69, I guess. No payments. There's no NFC here on the watch. No app store. No third-party apps. No third-party watch faces. Basically, none of the polish of a wearable OS that has been iterated for a decade at this point, which is something like Wear OS. But you do get fitness tracking. 120 sports are actually included in the fitness tracking area. Nothing's own collection of watch faces. Some of them included on the device when you take it out of the box. Others included on the companion app that you can use to send over different watch faces to the watch. Music controls, though, often when I tried to get it to play from Spotify, sometimes it would sync over like it just did there. Other times it would not. Well, and I spoke too soon because it's not really sending it through, even though it's recognizing the linkage to Spotify, but it's not actually doing anything when I hit to play. And of course you get all sorts of other things like timers and keypads for dialing and some integrated weather that you can take a look at. That actually looks not too bad. Also reminders, stress analysis, heart rate. And I keep talking and referencing the app. This is a proprietary app that actually manages the syncing between your phone and the watch itself. Also, you've got some of your fitness stuff integrated in here. You've got all of the details of different sleep tracking, your blood oxygen ratings, and all that stuff stored within the app. And yes, 
you do get, I think, one of the most important things on a smartwatch like this, notifications. But this is, I believe, a critical point about this watch in general. So really, this review helped me realize a few things about the wearables market right now. One, there isn't just fitness wearables and smartwatches. In between those is a mid-tier category, something that I can call maybe smart fitness wearables or dumb smartwatches. They don't do everything a smartwatch is known for, but they do more than a standard fitness wearable. And second, Secondly, a smartwatch that is not a fitness-only wearable must do one thing without fail, and I'm sure you can guess what that is. That's notification triage. If I get a message on my phone, my watch, it must pass that through to me when it comes in. It's the buzzer on my wrist that really keeps me connected to the goings-on with my phone. And the CMF Watch Pro 2 failed far more times than it succeeded in this basic category. Many times notifications were coming into the phone and not updating on the watch. Many times out of the blue, suddenly the watch would go like crazy suddenly as it had to catch up with everything that it had missed. It's almost like it disconnected in the app and then eventually it for whatever random reason reconnected and all those notifications came streaming through in a mad dash. Many times the watch was connected to the phone that was verified by Bluetooth settings on my phone. And yet, like I said, the app that manages to pass through that data showed that it was disconnected. So there was something off between the setting here that said it was connected and the actual Bluetooth settings on the phone. Sometimes I'd reconnect to the app and it would solve the problem. Other times it would try and fail, try and fail. And when those notifications are present, there is really very little that you can actually do with them. Like this is an email, for example. I can't swipe it away, but yes, that's a Wear OS habit that I want to do. But that's one, one move that would allow me to triage, right? Instead, I have to tap in. Pretty much all I can do is ignore that and boop, it goes away. Okay, fine. But if you've got a long list of notifications, that's going to take twice as much time to do that. Some of these that you interact with, you can actually place a comment in, but it's not a comment that you can type or even speak. They're predetermined. You have to set it in advance in the app. Overall, notifications were a huge ongoing frustration for me. Now, unrelated to notifications, another annoyance. A few times I went for a jog, I actually did this while I was in uh, Manhattan. I fired off the running activity. GPS could not be acquired. I was told to sit and wait for it, <laughs> which I did for a while, um, or I could ignore the GPS entirely and just continue. I never once really got it to work as expected. And one glaring software feature that many will miss entirely, there is no security feature here. There is no security mode on this watch, no pin, no pattern, no way to lock it. If that feels like too much exposure, too much security exposure to you, then that might and probably will be a deal breaker for you. Now, no question, this is an inexpensive wearable. And I'd say in general, nothing did a pretty good job picking design elements to help bring the cost down to the $69 price point. And yes, this battery has some serious legs to it, but, and I hate to say this, perhaps part of the reason the battery lasts so long is that the OS and that linkage to the phone simply isn't doing much to begin with. Between the lack of notification updates to the watch disconnecting and reconnecting to the smartphone randomly throughout the day, it was really hard to see what the watch was really doing for me in the same ways that I've become accustomed to with watches like the Pixel Watch 2 and the OnePlus Watch 2. Now, I'm curious to know how you feel about this. The price is right, but what are you willing to trade off for that price in a wearable like this? Leave a comment down below. Let's find that Goldilocks point together for devices in this category. And subscribe while you're down there so you don't miss future reviews like this one. And also, by the way, including the CMF Buds Pro 2, which I'm gonna be reviewing very soon. I'm very excited about that one because, well, talk about nailing the essentials. Keep subscribed and you'll get it when it drops. And thank you for watching my review of the CMF Watch Pro 2. I'm Jason Howell. I'll see you next time.